السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله يا أرحم الراحمين يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين تدي إن شاء الله We will start with hadith number uh, 23. Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as reported by Abi Malik al Harith ibn Asim al Ash'ari قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الطهور شطر الإيمان والحمد لله تملأ الميزان وسبحان الله والحمد لله تملأني أو تملأ ما بين السماوات والأرض والصلاة نور والصدقة برهان والصبر ضياء والقرآن حجة لك أو حجة عليك كل الناس يغدو فبائع نفسه فمعتقها أو موبقها أبو مالك الحارث بن عاصم الأشعري رضي الله عنه قال The messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Purity is half of faith And the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills the scale. Glorification and praise fill up what's between the heavens and the earth. Prayer is nur, prayer is light, charity is proof, and patience is illumination. The Quran is a proof It's a proof for you or against you. All people go out early in the morning and sell themselves, either setting themselves free or ruining themselves. It's an amazing hadith, subhanAllah, that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, started it by saying, purity is half of faith. So purification of the body, it includes purification of the heart, purification of all the diseases of the heart, envy, pride, selfishness, etc. So purification here is of both physically and spiritually. So both Uh, is considered as half of faith. So we have to empty our heart. We have to purify our heart. We have to empty, empty it from this dunya and we're all clinging to it. So it can receive the divine light. The light which will guide our path that leads to safety. And this, we need this safety. This is the safety that we are seeking on the day of judgment. So alhamdulillah, when we are there, when we are safe, we say alhamdulillah. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, walhamdulillah tamla'u al-mizan. So alhamdulillah, which is the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fills the scale. And it means the reward fills the scale, the day of, ju of judgment. So whenever we have something good in this dunya, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for giving it to us. Because it's not, it's not us that we did the good thing, or it's not us that we uh, followed the good things. No, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that guided us to do so. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what's good and what's bad. How? Why? 
So when we have something good, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we follow the orders of Allah when he said, If you thank me, then I will increase the bounties. And we, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in case of calamities that, for example, we had a car accident and we um, uh, someone uh, uh, broke his, his leg. So he will say, Alhamdulillah, it's only one leg. Alhamdulillah, it's not the hip. Alhamdulillah, my head is not injured. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all cases. In all circumstances, we just praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We just thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But do we know how to thank him? No. And that's why there are so many duas that, that uh, show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't know how to thank him. And one of these duas, we, th we say, Allahumma inna la nuhsi thana'an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Ya Allah, we don't know how to thank you the way that you, you wanted us to thank you or the way that you deserve to be thanked. We don't know how to thank you, Ya Allah. We say the words that we that we can that come to on our that come on our uh, uh, tongue, but we really don't know how to thank you, Ya Allah. Wa Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, tamlaani aw tamlau ma bain al samawati wal ard. So Subhanallah means to, th to free Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from any perfection, to free him from any need. We, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, does not need us, we need him. And the, the best way to say subhanallah it actually comes naturally when we see a very beautiful scene. The first word we say, Subhanallah. So these two, two phrases, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, they fill between the skies and the earth. So, performing the salah is nur, is light. How? The light we get from salah is great. And the outer appearance is nothing but a reflection of the inner appearance. So when we perform the salah, the heart will be filled up with light which will be reflected on the face. And that's why when you see someone uh, special or someone with a radiant face, you say, this person has nur on his face. So his inner, inner appearance is reflected on the outer appearance. So what you see on the face is what is inside the heart. So a salah fills up the heart with nur. Wassalatu nur. Wassadaqatu burhan. So charity is a proof. When you give money to the people who are less fortunate, then you feel so happy that you made them happy. And it's, it's a great feeling to feel this happiness in the heart. So we have, we have to be good, we have to be givers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 
appointed Joseph a very small portion of our money to the poor and to the needy. That if each and every one pays his charity, pays his zakah, then there won't be any poor people in this dunya. But charity is not easy on the hypocrites. It's hard on the hypocrites. How can they, how can they help people who, whom Allah has made poor? No. Those poor people have rights in your money that you have to give. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you money, this is fitna. Fitna. Because he wants to test you. Do you deserve this money or not? So many people, so many people were rich, but they did not fulfill Allah's, Allah's right and the poor's right in their money. And Allah destroyed their wealth. They made them lose it. Because charity is just growth in the money. In the money. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised if you give for his sake, if you pay charity, then he will multiply you. He will reward you. And then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَالصَّبْرُ ضِيَاءُ Practicing patience also gives you light. We all pass through so many tests. And the reason for the test is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. What are we going to do in times of hardship? Are we going to practice patience? Or are we going to, to keep nagging and keep uh, opposing and keep asking Allah, why did you do that? Why me? Why? No, there is no why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a test and he wants to see how we react. So we want to be winners. We want to be successful after these tests. والقرآن حجة لك أو عليك. So the Quran is a proof for you or against you. The Quran is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a, a complete protocol. It's a complete program for our lives. So we have to listen to the Qur'an, we have to recite the Qur'an, we have to understand the Qur'an, we have to apply the Qur'an, we have to follow its orders. It's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is said that the Qur'an is a rope. It's the, the one of the ends is the, uh, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has given us the second end of this rope so we have to catch this, this rope we have to, to, to fulfill our duty towards the Quran and the more we know our Quran the more we will be rewarded in the day after in heaven the, uh, a person would say, would, would hear, Iqra' wartaqi. Read, recite Quran and raise up. So those who have a good connection, a strong bond with the Quran in this dunya, they will be highly elevated in the day after. And the more we understand the Quran and the more we apply it, then the closer we are to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment. Because when we apply it, then we are following the rules 
uh, of how we should treat people, how we should, what should, what, what are our duties towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? What are our duties towards people? What are our duties towards our, ourselves? So we have strong bond with the Quran that that will uh, that will be uh, a savior for us in the day of judgment. So, والقرآن حجة لك أو عليك. So this is if you if you fulfill the duties your your part towards the Quran, then this is something good for you. But if you don't, then it will be something bad against you. So the hadith here focuses on the importance of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doing the dhikr, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wallahu akbar, and reading the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his Quran. كل الناس يغدو فبائع نفسه فمعتقها أو موبقها. Every day uh, we walk up. So each and every person will uh, do either good during the day or doing bad. If he does good, then he saves himself. Or if he does bad during the day, then he ruins himself. So these, this is the first hadith of, uh, uh, that we are doing today. And we will see how all the hadith are connected together. In the next hadith, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving us a hadith Qudsi. What does this, what does the word hadith Qudsi mean? And how does it differ from a regular hadith? The hadith Qudsi uh, is the, the meaning of the hadith is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the words are not. Where if we compare it to, to the Quran, the Quran was sent down in wording and meaning. But the Hadith Qudsi was sent down only in meaning. And we can recite Hadith in Salah, but we cannot recite Hadith Qudsi. And the regular Hadith is just the words the actions, the um, reports of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa something that happens to with, uh, within the life of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So we have hadith Qudsi and a regular hadith, and of course, the words of Allah, which is the Quran. So, عن أبي ذر الغفاري عن رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما يروي عن ربه عز وجل أنه قال So Abu Dhar رضي الله عنه reported Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم as saying that Allah the exalted and glorious said Okay So يا عبادي إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا تظالموا. All my servants, I have forbidden oppression for myself and have made it forbidden amongst you. So do not oppress one another. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I, I will not practice injustice against anyone. So you have also, you have to, uh, uh, to be just between 
your uh, each people between people and you have to be just for yourself also you have to show justness to yourself so you don't practice unjustness against people you have to be good to people you cannot oppress anyone and also you have to be careful not to oppress yourself when you sin then you are oppressing yourself because you are leading yourself to go to hell fire when you sin and you do not repent. So, injustice is forbidden. So, never be an oppressor. The mom can be an oppressor if she does not care, take care of her responsibilities. She has duties towards her husband. She has duties towards her children. She has duties towards her, her house. She has duties towards her neighbors. She has to be a, a good person. She cannot oppress anything, anyone. So if each and every person in this life watches out what are his responsibilities and never oppress them, never oppress the people who he is responsible for, then the whole society will be sound. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on. And he said, Ya ibadi, كلكم ضال إلا من هديته فاستهدوني أهدكم All my servants, you are all astray except for those I have guided. So seek guidance of me and I shall guide you. So now we, we see in this dunya how people are going astray right and left. If you go and, and check the route for this, it's the parents have neglected their duty toward their children when they were so young. They did not tell them what's right and what's wrong. They did not tell them, they did not show them that you can do this and you cannot do that. They did not show their kids that if you do this, then you will disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do that, then you will, you will ruin yourself. You will ruin your akhirah. So do not wait until your children are old enough and then say, oh, they are not praying, they are not uh, listening, they are not good, uh, good uh, children. No, you cannot pick up a fruit if you did not water the seed, if you did not take care of the, uh, of the um, uh, tree when it was growing up, it will not give you good seeds. It will not give you good fruit because the seed is ruined. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance always. And you as parents have to always make dua that Allah would protect your children, that Allah would guide your children, that Allah would provide your children with the good suhbah. Because this is very important. The good suhba. We hear so many stories about the bad suhba that took the children astray from their parents. There is no solid foundation. So any, any, any wind, right or left, can take the child away. يا عبادي كلكم جائع إلا من أطعمته فاستطعموني أطعمكم. Oh my servants, 
all of you are hungry, except for those I have fed. So seek food of me, and I shall feed you. So we are all hungry. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given us, then how can we, uh, how can we uh, eat? If there is no provision, how can we, how can we eat? And if we cannot eat, then we would get sick. And when we get sick, we will not be able to, th to, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with, when we have our food, we have to have the niyyah. Ya Allah, we are eating so to be strong, so to be able to, to worship you. Ya ibadi, kullukum aarin illa man kasawtuh, fastaksumi uksikum. Oh my servants, all of you are naked except for those I have clothed. So seek clothing of me, and I shall clothe you. So we cannot do anything without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in all these cases, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to make dua. Do not belittle the power of dua. If you need anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just make dua. And he, is, he, he wants us to make dua for food. He wants us to make dua for, for guidance. He wants us to make dua for clothing. He wants us to, to, to talk to him. Talk to Allah. And Allah will be closest to you in in. Several, several, at several times. The first one is when you are making sujood, you are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before Fajr prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the closest to us. And he will, he will be saying, is there someone who is repenting so I would accept their repentance? Is there someone who is asking for forgiveness and I will forgive him if is there, is there until the Fajr Adhan comes in. This is blessed time. Do not lose it. Wake up before Fajr a little bit and just mikudu, pray to Rakaz and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ibadi, innakum tukhti'oon bil layli wal nahar وَأَنَا أَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا فَاسْتَغْفِرُونِي أَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ O my servants, you sin by night and day. And I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness of me, and I shall forgive you. Again, ask Allah for forgiveness. We are all sinners. But we... We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. We ask Allah, we, we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts everybody's repentance unless he's on the deathbed and he knows that there is no way that's the end. And then he says, I repent to Allah. That should be before. During, during our lives, every day, just say, Ya Allah, Allahumma inni tubtu ilayka, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I am, I am repenting, Ya Allah. Forgive me. Faghfir li. Forgive me, Ya Allah. I am, I am afraid of the day after, Ya Allah. Save me. Save me, Ya Allah. يا عبادي إنكم لن تبلغوا ضري فتضروني ولن تبلغوا نفعي فتنفعوني. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying here, you will not, oh my servants, you will not attain harming me so as to harm me. And you will not attain benefiting me so as to benefit me. 
you cannot do anything to me. Which means we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't need us. He does not need anything from us. Ya ibadi, law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum kanu ala atqa qalbi rajulin wahidin minkum ma zada thalika fi mulki shayna. Oh my servant, where the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, were to be as pious as the most pious heart of anyone, any one man of you, that would not increase my dominion. It would not increase my dominion in anything. يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أفجر تقلب رجل واحد ما نقص ذلك من ملكي شيئا. Oh my servants, now the other way. So the first group, everyone was good. Now the second group, all my servants were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, to be as wicked as the most wicked heart of any one man of you. That would not decrease my dominion in, in anything. Nothing at all. يا عبادي لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم قاموا في صعيد واحد فسألوني فأعطيت كل إنسان مسألته ما نقص ذلك مما عندي إلا كما ينقص المخيط إذا أدخل البحر Oh my servants Were the first of you and the last of you The human of you and the jinn of you to raise up in one place, so everyone is in one place, and make a request of me, and everyone is asking me for something. And I were to give everyone that he requested, that would not decrease what I have. That would not decrease anything in my kingdom. So that would not decrease it, any more that a needle decreases the sea if put into it. So imagine someone taking a needle and putting it in a sea and then raising it. What does, what does this needle hold? How much of the sea water? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is saying. And the last one, he's saying, the last part, Ya ibadi, innama hiya a'malukum uhsiha lakum, thumma uwafikum iyaha, faman wajada khayran falyahmadillah, waman wajada ghayra thalik, fala yalumanna illa nafsa. So, oh my servants, it is but your deeds that I record for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recording everything for us. What we say, what we do, how, how we look, we, we, uh, how we look at things, how we look at people, how uh, our tongue, what, what our tongue is saying. Is it saying any ghib uh, any uh, backbiting, any bad words, any, anything, anything not good? Or is it just everything good? So it's nothing but your deeds that I record for you and then recompense you for. So when you come back to me, then you will be, you will stop before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will ask people, Allah will, will talk to people. So let let everyone, let him who finds good praise Allah. He did good in this dunya, then he will be a winner. and He will find good in the day after. So if this happens, when this happens, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
and let him who he finds other than that. If someone finds something bad, something evil that he has done, his, he took his uh, record in his left hand, he, he has a black face, he, then that blame, that person should not blame anyone or anything but himself. Because this is what, what's the result of all his deeds in the dunya. So if you look at each and every part of the hadith, you find that it starts with Ya Ibadi. Ya Ibadi. So the hadith, the benefit of repeating the, the phrase Ya Ibadi, oh my servants, it reminds it reminds the listener of his or her status. We are the slaves of Allah. We are all slaves. So we have to understand that we cannot oppress anyone and we cannot oppress ourselves even. So we have to be good. So this is how the hadiths are related to each other. They are connected to each other. Then in the next hadith, uh, Sayyidina Abu Zar radiyallahu anhu said, أَنَّ أُنَاسًا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالُوا لِلنَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ ذَهَبَ أَهْلُ الدُّثُورِ بِالْأُجُورِ يُصَلُّونَ كَمَا نُصَلِّي وَيَصُومُونَ كَمَا نَصُومُ وَيَتَصَدَّقُونَ بِفُضُولِ أَمْوَالِهِمْ so Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that some people came to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and said to him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the rich have taken away all the reward. So they were complaining. They observe salah as we do, and they give sadaqah as we do. They give sadaqah out of their surplus wealth because they are they are poor or they are rich and we are the poor so what did say the muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam say qala aw laysa qad ja'ala allah lakum ma tasaddaqun he gave them the answer he gave them the the solution to their problem he said to them has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not prescribed to you following which you can also give sadaqah? So he is giving us the answer. So what's the answer? How is it, to, how is it going? Inna bi kulli tasbihatin sadaqah. In every declaration of the glorification of Allah, which is saying, Subhanallah, there is a sadaqah. So now Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is going to, go, to uh, uh, list different types of sadaqahs. So the first one is saying, La, la ilaha illallah. So the first one is saying, sorry, um, Subhanallah. The first one is saying, Subhanallah. This is the first sadaqah. Then, وَكُلُّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ And every takbir, every time you say, Allahu Akbar, this is sadaqah. Okay? And another one, another type of sadaqah. وَكُلُّ تَحْمِيدَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ and in, uh, in, every, in every praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever you say, Alhamdulillah, this is sadaqah. And, وَفِي كُلِّ تَهْلِيلَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ And in every time you say, He is the one, Tahlila is La ilaha illallah, 
He is the one. This is sadaqah. So how many sadaqahs now do we have? Do we have? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. So each of these are sadaqahs. Then, وَأَمْرٍ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ صَدَقَةٍ And enjoining of good is sadaqa. So if you see something good and you tell people to do it, then this is enjoining of good. This is sadaqa also. وَنَهْيٍ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ صدقة. And in forbidding evil is sadaqa. So, when you see someone doing something bad, something evil, you should prevent him. And there are so many, three, at least three uh, steps of uh, uh, following, of uh, forbidding. First of all, to talk to him and to give the order of uh, forbidding. Uh, if not, uh, so to, to change it yourself? If not, then to make dua for that person. Okay? So, وَأَمْرٍ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَصَدَقَةِ وَنَهْيٍ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ صَدَقَةِ وَفِي بُطَعِ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةِ And in... Anyone's in sexual intercourse between a husband and a wife, there is a sadaqah. And the companions here said, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, Ayati ahaduna shahwatahu wa yakunu lahu fiha ajr. So they asked, Oh, Messenger of Allah, is there a reward for a person who satisfies his sexual needs amongst us? And he said, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, قَالَ أَرَأَيْتُمْ لَوْ وَضَعَهَا فِي حَرَامٍ أَكَانَ عَلَيْهِ وِزْرٍ So he said, you see, if, if that person was to satisfy himself with something forbidden, with something haram, would it not be a sin on his part? فَكَذَلِكَ إِذَا وَضَعَهَا فِي الْحَلَالِ كَانَ لَهُ أَجْرٍ Similarly, if he were to satisfy it legally, to satisfy it in a halal way, then he will be rewarded. So this is, this hadith is about competing in doing the good. So those poor people came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu and they said, Ya Rasulullah, the, the rich ones have, have uh, competed, have won the competition. They did so and they, they, they are doing so and so and we cannot do that. So he gave them a solution to their problem. He gave them uh, a lot of uh, uh, so many ways that each and every one is considered a sadaqah. And this is out of the mercy of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he did not, he did not just uh, get the good things to be for those who are, who can do it. No, each and every one of us can do uh, uh, so many of those sadaqahs that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Now, in the last hadith that we are covering today, uh, we are uh, uh, going to talk about the uh, fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, an Abi Hurayra radiyallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kullu sulama min al-nasi alayhi sadaqah. So, the Messenger of Allah said, on the authority of Abu Huraira, he said, there is a compulsory sadaqah, a compulsory charity to be given for every joint of the body. So, every joint in your body, which you are using, alhamdulillah, easily, it's 
the, the, this join is a sign, they're a sign uh, of Allah's perfection in creating us. So we have to uh, show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the is a compulsory sadaqah to be given for every joint of the human body as a sign of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when every day the sun rises. What does this mean? You pray two rakahs of salatul duha. And salatul duha is the prayer that we pray after about 20 minutes of when after the sun rises. And this is just to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has created us in a perfect way. ويعين الرجل في دابته فيحمله عليها أو يرفع له عليها متاعه صدقة والكلمة الطيبة صدقة وبكل خطوة يمشيها إلى الصلاة صدقة ويميط الأذى عن الطريق صدقة تتم للحديث الصابع سبحان الله So what, what does this mean? This hadith also is listing different types of sadaqas that has been mentioned previously in the previous hadith. So, the first one is <laughs> To judge justly between two people is regarded as sadaqa. Good. This is also related to the previous hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prevented injustice and made it haram amongst people. So when you practice just, then when you are just, then this is called sadaqah. And also, وَيُعِينُ الرَّجُلَ فِي دَبَّتِهِ So helping a man concerning riding his animal so if, if you help someone uh, riding, um, uh, riding a car or getting up on a plane or doing something, so you are helping. So helping him to ride it or by lifting his luggage into it, then this is sadaqa. So if you are in uh, flying, uh, taking up a, uh, a flight, and you see an old uh, lady, an old man uh, wanting to lift his luggage up, and of course, help. That's a sadaqa. So, saying a good word is also sadaqa. A woman, a wife, saying good words to her husband is sadaqa. Saying good words to her children is sadaqa. Saying good words to her in-laws is sadaqa. Saying good words to her, to her parents is sadaqa. Saying her good words to her siblings is sadaqa. And of course, it comes to everybody. So always say good things. And this reminds us of the previous hadith, of an earlier hadith that we said, لا يؤمن أحدكم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت. Whoever believes in the day uh, uh, of judgment, then let him say good things or, or be silent. So saying the good word is also a sadaqa. وبكل خطوة يمشيها إلى الصلاة صدقة. So every step taken on one's way to offer the prayer in a mosque is also a صدقة. So go to mosques. And when you are there in the parking, don't park on the uh, closest uh, 
parking lot, uh, parking spaces to the to the door. Make it a little further so you can get more hasanat, more good deeds. And to remove a harmful thing from the way is also a sadaqa. So if you if you see some glass on the uh, on the street, remove it with the intention that you are helping people not to harm their, themselves. Then you will be rewarded. This is a sadaqa. So now within the the hadith that we learned today, we found so many ways of getting sadaqas. And sadaqas here is just to get as good deeds as we can. The doors of good deeds are open. They are so many, there are so many doors. And sometimes you, you, you hear that people say, we, there are, there are so many doors that we can open to get into paradise. And all these doors are the doors of having good manners. So if we connect all the hadith that we have learned so far, we will find that they are all related to each other. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us for to do all all possible uh, possible uh, um, uh, ways of sadaqah, all possible ways of good deeds, so that we get uh, highly rewarded in the day after, and we get connected with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we end with, Ya Rabbana lak alhamd wa shukru wa ni'mat wa rida. We thank you, Ya Allah. We thank you for everything that you have given us, for all the blessings that you have given us. And we thank you for all the blessings that you have prepared for your uh, winners, for, the, for your good servants whom they uh, uh, followed your orders and whom you will be satisfied on the day of judgment. Ya Arham Rahimeen. And until we meet again next week, inshallah, I would leave you by sending your salam and my salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.